last we did the 19th mantra, we will recall how we have to bring in a sense of how do we how do we bring in the concept of looking at one's life from a, a vertical view vis-a-vis -vis a horizontal view the perspective of trying to inject a vertical view and a horizontal view at every stage of one's life to every experience. The objective is to dissolve the unnecessary attention we give all through our life to ourselves. The attention we give to ourselves feeds and sustains the ego, the individuality, the jiva. So by injecting this horizontal and vertical view to the current experiences, we are able to dilute or liquidate the, the ego and to the extent the individuality or the ego gets dissolved you're able to assert the non-dual Brahman that's the message which we last learned where he said Mayeva sakalam jatam, mai sarvam pratishthitam. Everything has risen, exists, and dissolves in me. Mai sarvam layam yat. Everything dissolves in me. And then he says, Tad Brahma dvayam asmayam. I am that non dual Brahman. So to be able to rise to the grandeur of asserting that I am Brahman, it has, it can only happen when you are negating that which you're asserting now. One is the statement of fact, another is a statement of practice. So if and only if I'm able to liquidate, shift the attention of myself onto the higher, which is the world around me. And how do I shift it? The vertical view and the horizontal view. That's how we have given the steps to do that. How do I dissolve the attention on myself? Take it from a, a horizontal perspective. What joy or what sorrow, what pain, what gain, Whatever I'm experiencing now, what is it compared to everybody around me? Divided by 8 billion people. The moment you dissolve your joy, your success, your wealth, your glory, your pain, your suffering, your birth and death. Divided by 8 billion people. It becomes 8 billionth of joy, 8 billionth of ecstasy, 8 billionth of glory or 8 billionth of pain. Finished. What is eight billionth of success in your life to the world, to the humanity? It is insignificant. Oh, I have got this. I am going through this. I am. Oh, I, 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 I. Unnecessarily glorifying yourself or attention on yourself. So divided by the horizontal view instantly becomes insignificant. And whenever it becomes insignificant, you say, so what? You just say, so what? You will not be able to say, so what, if it is significant? How can you say significant? It, 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 it has a toll on you. So for anything that one goes, one goes through, not for the world not to have a toll on us, 
just say horizontal view first. And then the vertical view is look back into one's own life. All the failures. What is this failure compared to all the failures I've had in my life? What is this pain I'm going through compared to all that pain I have endured? What is the big joy or excitement I'm going through compared to all that I was excited with? Right from the first time I got if you can recall your memory as a childhood, there's something that you got first and how excited you were. And I'm thinking of myself of my childhood days. There, I remember I used to have a, a, a double-decker bus, a metal double-decker ash color bus. If my father is there in the class, he will remember me. <laughs> and I used to tie a string and keep running. It is a small miniature one, a small one. And as to that England bus, but it was not that color comb, but it was that I still remember vividly as I'm talking of it, it flashes back. Still remember running all over the house with that. And it used to be such a precious thing to me. I was so attached to it. It meant so much to me. And if the wheel broke, I used to, my father used to come and repair it and try to mend with it and hopefully it'll run again, you know all the kind of excitement and meant so much to me then. What about it now? Today, if I were to look at the excitement I'm going through now with all that I've gone through, there's a fair chance you will treat this as just another passing phase. So this Vertical and horizontal is a very, very powerful spiritual tool. A very powerful spiritual tool to liquidate your ego, to shift your focus off yourself, remove yourself off the focus, take yourself off the focus. Whether you have health or ill health, how does it matter, man? Why should it bog you down? Why should it matter to you? Why should it impair you? Why should it affect you? Why should it destroy you? Now, nah, it is just a passing thing. You'll let it pass. And then perhaps one day, you and I can stand together and say, Tad Brahma Dvayam Asmayam. I am that non-dual Brahman. Unless until you do this, you can't get there. This is the journey. That is a destination. If this journey itself destroys you, how will I reach the destination? If this des journey itself becomes an impediment, how can I reach the destination? The journey has to be very pleasant. The journey has to be very smooth. The journey has to be, no doubt, it will be full of challenges, but you will have to go through that. You will have to sail through that. And how? This way, the vertical and horizontal. I am just reminding of what we last spoke. Okay. <clears throat> and, and when I say this is not being informative, and I, each one of us will understand that it is that capacity to inject this thought. And the, the capacity to inject this thought boils down to how much wisdom you are able to garner at that moment where the, the emotion should not engulf you, the situation should not overpower you. You are able to inject this wisdom at that moment. You can philosophize afterwards, but there's no point. But at that moment to be able to inject it makes all the difference. All right, we'll move on, we'll take Mantra 20. Anoraniya naham eva tadvan Maha naham vishva maham vichitram Puratano ham purusho ham ishaha Hiran mayo ham shivarupa masmi Anoraniya naham eva tadvan 
ಮಹಾನಹಂ ವಿಶ್ವಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿತ್ರ ಪುರಾತನೋಹಂ ಪುರುಷೋಹಮೀಷ ಹಿರನ್ಮಯೋಹಂ ಶಿವರೂಪಮಸ್ಮಿ ಅನೋರಣೀಯನಹಮೇವ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಸಟ್ಲ ದನ್ ದ ಸಟ್ಲ ಮೈನ್ಯೂಟ ದನ್ ದ ಮೈನ್ಯೂಟ even so i am great mahan hameva mahan i am the manifold universe vichitram vishwam i am the varied universe puratanah i am the ancient i am purusha the supreme being i am isha the lord i am hiranmayam <clears throat> golden shivarupam asmi i am auspiciousness the most auspicious thing i am subtler than the subtle even so i am great i am the manifold universe i am ancient i am purusha the lord the golden i am auspiciousness now what we are trying to convey here is the atman what is trying to be received is the atman it can't be i am conveying something and you are receiving something else no if i am talking in english and suddenly each one of you are delivering a different language something is not right something is happening in between what i am conveying is should be received isn't it now what conveys the atman is the atman what receives the atman is the atman <clears throat> means to the extent i have unfolded the self i am able to convey the self to you to the extent you have unfolded the self you are able to relate or receive the spirit of the self so it is direct communication between people of self unfoldment so the dialogue of the self among some its people those who unfolded the self it's very interesting even to look at that perspective isn't it it's a dialogue between people who have unfolded the self who are interested to unfold their selves and to the extent you have to that extent you are in sync beyond that you can't relate to it you can't relate to it so and what is being conveyed the first thing he says in the mantra anoraniyanaham eva aham i am subtle than the subtle it is so subtle that it can't be captured in a language it can't be captured in emotion it can't be captured in thought i can't convey in words i can't convey in emotion i can't capture in thoughts how am i conveying the atman is conveying itself in a language which it knows it is poetic it speaks the language of its own and you must have know the language to understand what language is being spoken and not in words not in emotion not in thoughts but that spirit that essence the quintessence that quintessence is the atman that's why i said it is the atman that is speaking to what extent to the extent i have unfolded it is atman that is receiving to the extent you have unfolded if i have unfolded 30% i can only give 30% of atman to you how much can you receive reddy garu will only receive to the extent he has unfolded let's say he has unfolded 50% 30% he will only receive 
He is receiving all the 30 percent I am giving. But since he is unfolded 50 percent, the 20 percent he says this fellow doesn't know what he is talking. He is only very bacha. <laughs> Spiritual bacha, you will think. Correct? <laughs> No, no, Guruji, I think if you go, if I try to correlate as a mathematical equation, like you unfolded 30%, but whereas we are in somewhere between 10 to 15, means we, we are nowhere in the wavelengths of receiving. Is it I can consider that way? Yes. No, it is to the extent you are unfolded. But if you say if you are 15% unfolded, you, mm. will, you will relate exactly what we are saying. Now, while I am talking, I can only relate to the person to the extent I have unfolded. The, the Guru is talking to us. The Guru is the, the text, the Kaivalya Upanishad, the Guru of the Yor. He is conveying to us. He is talking from the standpoint of a, a realized soul. A hundred persons realized soul is talking. Now, when he is transmitting hundred percent, how much as a speaker, how much will I receive? To the extent only I have unfolded. Yeah. I will only relate 30 percent to him. I may be able to chant, I may be able to mesmerize you with words, I may be able to drag grip your attention, all that I can do. But yet, I'm only connected 30% of what he's saying, and you will only get 15% of what you are able to receive. Beyond that, it is words, words, yes. words. That is a staggering concept, I'd say. That's, that's very, very, it's inspiring to know, understand that. It's not in yes. words, it's beyond that. Beyond the words. So I must grow spiritually to be able to understand the spirit of what these masters are saying. And these are desperate attempts the Guru is making of the text to inspire us, to give pointers of what that truth is. When he said in the previous mantra, Tad Brahma Dvayam Asmayam, I am that non-dual Brahman. What is that non-dual Brahman? This mantra is giving us description of what that Brahman is. And the question is, am I able to relate to it? Am I able to attune to the spirit of it? Am I enjoying the melody of that Atman speaking? Or have I switched off and I'm seeing my mobile? Or I'm seeing in some autumn, what is going on? You're, you're distracted. You're not interested. It can't be that. You can be right in this and yet not be here. It's very profound, very, very profound. You may talk of it, you may speak of it, you may advocate it, but yet not relate to it. It's like a doctor who prescribes health, he's unhealthy. <laughs> a fellow who advocates discipline, he's indisciplined. It's possible that I may be talking of Atman, but I can't relate to the Atman I'm talking. Very much possible. So I must understand that I can only attune to the extent I have unfolded. But imagine if there's a dialogue amongst the realized souls. What will be the dialogue, sir? <laughs> it, it's, it, it can't, even if I am one amongst them, I will not understand because I don't have the capacity to attune. That's true. But even to visualize, imagine realized souls are talking, two realized souls are talking to each other. Whew, it's a... <laughs> you know, it, it, a realized soul is talking to a, an idiot like me, an illiterate, a mudhamati like all of us, and yet they talk this language. If they are talking to each other, what will be the language? It's like a person who knows a particular sport is trying to explain to a person who does not know what that sport is. He will go down to the very fundamental. It's like you bring a, a, somebody from Europe who has never heard cricket. He only knows cricket as a bug. Oh, cricket, I know. It makes cut, 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 noise. Cricket, that's all I know. I didn't know cricket is a sport. Now you take him to a test match. Uh, you take him to the Lord's test match and you have to explain to him about cricket. Now I'll give the job to Ramji to explain one minute about cricket. How would you explain cricket to an illiterate, sir? Because I, I don't have that much talent. 
No, sir, even I don't have. Only oh, what uh, what uh, Bernard Shah said, it is played by 11 fools and watched by 11,000 fools. <laughs> No, don't tell him. That will be the <laughs> that will be the end of cricket for him. Yeah, I yeah. thought so. I thought so. From his point of view, he would he would completely relate to Bernard Shaw. What Correct. is this? Eleven fellows running behind one ball, and <laughs> eleven thousand people sitting and entertaining themselves. <clears throat> but how would that man, with no iota of knowledge of cricket, process what's happening in the ground? Vis a vis a person who has complete knowledge of the game, understand the intricacies of what's an in-swinger, what an out-swinger, who is a fast, medium, medium, fast, medium baller. You know, it's very interesting, even in, in bowling. Harish, do you know? If you ever watch cricket, a fast baller, there is qualification, whether he is medium, is medium fast, fast, medium, fast. Am I right, Ramji? So if a bowler is bowling at, am I right, sir? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Fast, uh, fast and uh, medium fast and medium pace, they're all uh, terms used for different, to describe, uh, to describe different speeds at which you bowl. A baller is categorized based on the speed he bowls and pace. So how? Uh, but yet, when I talk a language to a person who doesn't understand sport, you will have to start by saying, you know, cricket is a game which is played by 11 people on each side. And a test match is played for five days. And a one-day international played for one day. And a test match, they play 90 overs aside. And each fellow... Each team is given a chance and you start by, <laughs> if a fellow who is sitting next to you who's wanting to enjoy the test match, you say, what is this commentary going on? Kindergarten commentary going on of test match. You fellas sit in the lounge outside or in the cafeteria, discuss and then come be prepared to enjoy the test match. Don't disturb the ambience or the, uh, the beauty of watching a test match. It is a discord for a person who's attuned to the test match. That is the dialogue between a man of knowledge, a man of ignorance yeah. in the mundane field. Now, I'm only trying to draw that particular parallel to what would be the dialogue between two people who have profound knowledge of test cricket. He doesn't need to be told about the fundamentals. He, he is of a different league. So imagine. So... I'm only trying to tell that when you are in the spiritual field, you are a loner. How many have you, how many of you have been able to relate to me completely? I'm not saying I'm above you all or you are below me. I am at a certain level. You are at a certain level. The guru of the text is the highest level. Just like I can't relate to him at a certain point, I also can't relate to you or you can't relate to me. Because we are of different wavelengths. We are at different frequencies. It's a different frequency altogether. It's outstanding and applicable to all, all fields of activity. It's applicable to every, every field that you get into. And it's very much applicable here. So I'm only trying to uh, draw the sentiment with which the master here is trying to give the various pointers of what that Brahman is, what that truth is. And firstly, he says, it is very subtle. It is so subtle that you can't capture it. So if you are unable to capture it in words and thoughts and ideas, it is subtler than the subtle. Bring in the, the brilliant scientist, the most brilliant uh, who has won the Nobel Prize. And with all his brilliance, let him decipher and understand. He will not understand. In fact, many a time Einstein said this. He said, give me one point outside this world to give me a perfect calculation or description of what the world is. Being confined to this limitation, I can't give a perfect description. So the best Intellects can't understand this. That's what he says. Anoraniya nahamevam. 
is subtler than subtle. Right. And then he says, even so, I am great. Mm -hmm. Mahan Aham. <clears throat> Great compared to what? When you use the word great, it is always with reference to something, isn't it? Hmm? Setuji, are you there? Yesterday he came and uh, spoke to me something. Are you observed? Now I'm I'm drawing my conversation with Setuji yesterday. He told me to look at a particular website and he draw my attention to what is being given out there with reference to how these corporate gurus or leaders of the industry, how they're all being given this wisdom in a, in, a, in a language which they understand. And what he was trying to tell me is the knowledge that we are saying, the section, in fact, referring to a recently we did a, a certain section of the text of the Gita of Sthita Pragnya, who is a man of perfection. We did that. Drawing a reference to that. What were you saying, sir? Hmm? Yeah. No, no. What I was referring was, Madam, uh, there's a, that site was uh, Thriving Springs and it's a platform, new platform, a startup, but uh, with a lot of funding and uh, they are going for uh, world corporate leaders. They want to uh, uh, provide a platform for behavioral uh, skills. So they feel uh, artificial intelligence can be used and emotional quotient can be because all the leaders everywhere, many of uh, corporate leader here present will agree. It is uh, leadership uh, involves more of uh, 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 handling uh, team and getting things done and uh, being emotionally quotient strong. So the, I mentioned this Tita Prajna, uh, uh, which uh, Guruji gave uh, chapter two six, uh, that. Uh, 62 to 74, that uh, verses in uh, Pragati Resorts in uh, Lalit Kapoor's, uh, uh, where 70 people attended, they got extraordinary feedback from all the participants, a rating of uh, between 8 and 10. And uh, for the first time, they were hearing, because in uh, Lalit Kapoor's program is more of, uh, you know, having... Uh, uh, diet which is acceptable to our body so that we come out of all chronic diseases. But once we come out of this controlled conditions at home, we are again, we are in the marketplace and uh, we don't uh, really follow strictly what it is. But where the input of Guruji, this Tita Prajna, uh, saying that steadfastness, uh, quoting uh, Gita, uh, went a long way to all the because there were 10 participants including a couple of uh, doctor couples all the way came from chicago and california just to attend this uh, program and uh, they all said it was very something very unique and uh, uh, guruji was only given one hour's time for five hours and uh, shiva was the coordinator and convener of the whole program and uh, so this uh, uh, got a uh, then I got the idea. I was telling Guruji, uh, corporate leaders also need much more than this. And uh, there are uh, Fortune 500 uh, companies, leaders, they all look for this. And uh, this has to be told in a different fashion, acceptable to them. Without the moment we say Gita, any scriptural, or they relate it to religion and uh, they shut off and they don't uh, even want to listen. But if it is told in a different manner, uh, the, there is a lot of death and uh, uh, there is a cry from uh, all the leadership everywhere in every walk of life uh, longing for this type of uh, knowledge. That's what I was. I just shared with Guruji.
uh, Setuji gave the whole overview, a whole uh, program of Lalit Kapoorji he gave, you know. Thank you, Setuji, for the brief, but the, the aspect which I wanted to quote Setuji where he was saying there's so much relevance of this knowledge to the, the higher ups, the leaders, and he used the word and he referred here, the Fortune 500 companies, how they're all the real elite, the real successful people. Now, why I'm drawing a parallel to this conversation here, he says, I am great. I also, if, if I shared, I know one uh, yoga leader come, uh, he is also into uh, this uh, scriptures and all that. Uh, he conducted a 10 day course in uh, London two years back, two, twice he conducted, where Fortune 500, about 25 uh, CEOs were there. And uh, they didn't uh, leave, the, they were uh, spending nearly 12 hours a day with him. And two of them accompanied him to India just in, uh, during his travel because they want to talk to him one-to-one -to, -one to get some more insight into that uh, on a one-to-one -one basis. They came all the way to uh, Delhi and went back by the return flight just to be with the Guru. So I was just uh, telling him that it, it is for us to... Uh, we may be taking it these things easy, but there is a big uh, need, a big application uh, in uh, uh, industry and other areas, even in politics for that matter. Yeah. Yes, uh, I remember you referring to this as well. The, the point which is being drawn out, don't get distracted with all other things. The there is a very profound saying, even in, if you look back in history, it has always been that men of power had always sought men of wisdom. It has never been that men of wisdom sought men of power. It's the gurus uh, who were in their own world of their spiritual sanctuaries or spiritual worlds. The king used to leave his palace, go down to visit a visiting Swami or a, a Swami uh, in the outskirts of the kingdom. He would go and seek his audience. He would never summon the rishi or the sage to come and seek his audience. So when you compare wealth and power and you compare wisdom, Men of wisdom are superior to men of power. So when he says, I am great, it is not an egoistic feeling of being greater than something or I'm bigger than you, but you have that kind of a belief or a confidence or a, an assurance that you are one step higher than the best in the world out there. It's a feeling that you, an assurance or a feeling that you have all the success of your worldly achievements you put in front of this wisdom, this wisdom is one step ahead than that. Now the question is, do you recognize as receivers of this knowledge, as Setuji said this, there may be great demand for it, but as you are receiving it now, do you realize this? Do you get the feel of it? Do you get the assurance of it? All my life, I, I felt assured. I must assure you, I felt very assured that this wisdom is the greatest. There is nothing greater than this. I am great. It may be mistaken it to be an egoistic feeling, but that feeling you get that you are one notch higher. So all the fortune finite can come. We'll still have something to offer. Setuji. So he said, he will set up a meeting with one or two people. I said, please do. With the notion that I am great. I am not going to them. They are coming to get something from me. Like in the 70th verse of the Gita, he says, all the rivers merge into the ocean. The ocean never goes into the river. I am Paripurna without the river. The river wants to come and flow, let it flow. It doesn't want to flow, let it not flow. But I am Paripurna. So it doesn't, you don't get excited with it. In reality, it's a proposition, but even if something really 
materializes believe me you will not be swayed you will not be enamored because this is the greatest that you have men of power seek men of wisdom men of wisdom don't seek men of power so if you compare power and wisdom wisdom is one notch higher in that sense he says i am great and then he says vishwam aham vichitram i am the manifold universe means this brahman pervades everything in the world the world or the universe vishwam means the universe it pervades the entire universe the entire things and beings of the world is pervaded by me now you can interpret this when he says i pervade i am the manifold universe you can interpret this also as space you can apply it applies to space also space also is pervading the entire universe isn't it us are you following the comparison what is it that is pervading the entire world the entire universe the space the space pervades everything in the world because everything is consumed or contained by space right now this also can apply to to atman uh, to brahman to atman to brahman yes so you can there is a a parallel just like everything is consumed or contained in space everything is pervaded by brahman next he says i am ancient puratana when you say i am ancient brahman existed before the world began before the world was born brahman existed i am very old man i am puratana i am ancient and whenever we use one of the measuring tool of the world is ajima what's the measuring tool for the world and experiences time guruji time you're right and what is the unit of time second or minute to second the unit of time is second what does second mean a fraction of a Uh, a minute, one sixtieth of a minute. Second also means a second, no? Second, second, two, two. <laughs> second. So, what is before second? What's that? One first, first. Since it was before the second, it is ancient. that's the interpretation we can draw very nice guru isn't it ancient means before time time is born at the second experience there is no time at the first experience like time is an interval between two experiences just like a distance is between two points what's the distance between a and b there's no distance at point a similarly there is no time at a experience an experience there is no time time is born between two experiences therefore the unit of time is called second because the world is measured with time but brahman existed before the world was born whenever it was born if it was born for you and me it was born but for these masters they say it is all your own headache ha huh? what do you mean your headache gayatri ma the world is your headache they say our own imagination or maya correct your own imagination if your blood pressure is going high is your own imagination if your blood sugar is going high is your own imagination why are you going it's your creation no maya is your creation it doesn't exist 
what creates blood pressure for you doesn't create blood pressure for me isn't it so it's all self created so the world began at the second experience brahman existed at the very first experience therefore they say brahman is puratana is ancient is beyond time so vishwam refers to space puratana refers to time purushaha refers to causation purushaha refers to aham purusha i am the supreme being when you say the supreme being it is the very cause for the world you have to interpret supreme being as that which is the very cause for the world what is the cause for the world causation everything in the world is defined by the law of causation isn't it but something has caused the world uk the last class the last sunday class we learned it this will only this is the entry ticket for the next class for you if you get it wrong kaitrima uk is not allowed then you say thank you guruji i'll conveniently sit in the house and listen that also not allowed Well, we can't hear you. Yeah. In fact, I'm not attending. I'm not able. I'm. I'll not be able to attend next week's class for it. Therefore, <laughs> conveniently, you have chosen <laughs> to give the wrong answer. Is it? Uh, oh, I'm not very sure of the answer, Guru. <laughs> uh, I will have to remind you of what we discussed last Sunday, or you know, the last class when we had a fortnight ago. We said everything. has a cause and effect yes right when you see in effect there has to have a cause yes like when you see a house there obviously somebody must have built it. built it there has to be an architect a builder to build the house isn't it yes so there is if you apply the same logic we said you and i see a world there must be a world builder there somebody who yes. must be the architect for this world yes correct but many people give a straight forward interpretation to say that god created the world yes you know about this discussion we yes. had yes yes mm. so you have a fair chance that you will be permitted you may choose not to come since you remember now you answer the question what is the cause for the world he says i am the supreme being i am the cause for the world what is the cause for the world what created the world you lost all right pushpama what created the world pushpam will say this is the reason i don't want at no punish the class already i am going to some assault above that you are asking me she will say again we come back to the same as god created the world ah uh, correct god only created the world correct ma uh, what is the cause for the creation of the world the example I, at least if you can take the examples what we said वसंत वेलकम बैक टू वेलकम बैक टू इंडिया मा थैंक यू गुड इट्स सो नाइस टू बी इन योर क्लास सो नाइस टू हैव यू आल्सो आई मिस्ड यू फॉर थ्री मंथ्स solunga ma so remember we spoke I, you may not have been there but you understand the concept of the cause and effect we say we can't give the cause and effect like 
a chicken and an egg, like a seed in a tree. So the world is created. What is the cause for this creation? It is our own. Uh, it is our own creation. See our uh, like how we see uh, the rope as a snake. Mm. It is our own ignorance we have created. Absolutely right. Correct. Just like the rope is the cause for the snake, Brahman is the cause for the world. Not like the father is the cause for the son, not like the seed is the cause for the tree, not like the chicken is the cause for the egg. It is like the rope and the snake. Isn't it, Ma? So it is not like the cause and effect that we experience in the world, it is a causeless cause. It is the cause, but yet not the cause. Like a rope is the cause for the snake. So what is the cause? It's actually the ignorance of the rope. So when he says, I am the Purusha, I am the Supreme Being, the entire world is caused by me, not like the seed and tree, but like the rope and the snake. That's the example you got to take to understand this concept. Otherwise, we will end up saying, God created the world. Go, no God has created the world. It is ignorance of God that has created the world. So example, the rope and the snake. You remember, UK? PM, you remember the example we took? PM is Pushpama, no prime minister here. Good question, da. You're... No, I am just referring to the example that we explained in the last class of the rope and the snake, not like the chicken and egg, not a seed in a tree. Okay. And like the ocean and waves also? Uh, I wouldn't take that. What examples I'm taking, if you could relate to that, don't take the ocean example here. Okay. Shantima, following her. Aryam Guruji. Aryam Shantima. Yeah. So, are you able to follow the concept? Yeah, causeless cause. Brahman, Brahman is the causeless is cause. cause. Yeah. But we can't difficult to relate to it causeless cause because always we you know see the world as a cause and effect this is, is a causeless cause absolutely it's very difficult to fathom this because we are uh, we are we are only able to relate everything from a limited standpoint so we look everything in the world as a cause and effect But when we extend this idea, what is the origin for the world? When he says, I am the Purusha, I am the Supreme Being. Aham Purushaha. So the Brahman is the cause for the creation of the world. But when we say Brahman is the cause for the creation of the world, when you say God created the world, we make the fundamental mistake of attributing a motive to God. No creation, creation cannot happen. Like, like this foundation cannot happen without a, a, a genuine desire. You, I could have a noble desire, no doubt, but it can't happen without a desire backing it. Suddenly, out of thin air, it, it, is, it is born. Nothing is born without a, a desire. 
So when you plant a, a design, so when you say God created the world, we would make that fundamental error by planting motive or desire to God. No, God has created the world. So we say it is a causeless cause. It is the cause, but not the real cause. Like you and I understand. You and I understand that everything in the world is defined by the law of causation, cause and effect. If I am sick is because of my own past unhealthy lifestyle. That's the cause for my ill health. If I'm healthy in the future, the cause is my own discipline, is my own actions. So there is a cause and effect. When you see a house, there's a house maker. He has a desire to create a house, to build a house. So the house is his creation. There has to be the desire in him to create. He identifies with the urge to create and there's a creation. Am I right? For any creation, there has to be the urge to ident and then identify with the urge. Without the urge and the identification with the urge, there cannot be any creation. Now, if you apply the same logic to the world, as they say, many say ignorantly, they say world created, so God created the world. We would go to the extent by saying God had a motive to create and he identified with the urge to create God, to create the world. The world is not created by God. So it is not the same cause and effect. In fact, we say it is ignorance of God that has created this world of plurality of things and beings. The Brahman is ekam, is non-dual. Where is the world of plurality of Nama Rupa? The world of plurality is different to the non-dual Brahman. So the ignorance of that non-dual Brahman has created the world of plurality of things and beings. It would be very safe to say that. But yet he says, I am the cause. I am the supreme being responsible for this creation. How do you understand that? Just like that rope which was responsible for the creation of the snake. So the cause for the snake The boy treads on a rope and mistakes it to be a snake. Now, where did that snake come from? It couldn't have come if there was not rope there, isn't it? The fact that the rope existed in the backyard, the fact that you had tread a soft rope, you instantly mistook it to be a snake. So what contributed for the creation of the snake? It is the not the rope, it is the ignorance of rope. It is the ignorance of rope that was responsible for the creation of the snake and the state of paranoia you went after that because you, you felt that the snake stung you and you feel the poison going up through the legs and you feel the pain, all that is your imagination. So the entire world that you and I have created is born out of your own imagination, which is born out of the ignorance of your own self. I don't know myself. The ignorance of myself has created this world. So he says, I am responsible for that. Who is saying? The rope is saying. The Brahman is saying. I am the supreme Purusha. I am the supreme being. Outstanding. As I've said, these are desperate attempts being made by the master to give you indicators or pointers of what Brahman is. Because in the previous mantra, he said, I am that Brahman, that Brahma Dvayam Asmayam. I am that truth, that reality, that self. And he is giving us indications. And we have already gone through here. He says, Anorani Yanahame Vatadvam. I am subtler than the subtle. I am great Mahanaham. 
Vishwam Vichitram. I am that manifold universe. Everything in the world, in the universe, the world is pervaded by me. I am that ancient. Ancient means it existed before time. Purat, uh, Purat, and ancient Purushaha, the supreme being. And then he says, I am the Isha. I am the very Lord. Isha, the Lord. What does the Lord mean? When you say he is the Lord, what does it mean? Oh, I'm uh, happy to uh, note that uh, Laliji has uh, joined us. Uh, Laliji, are you there, sir? We were just, in fact, we were just taking a mention of our interaction uh, in the retreat in Hyderabad. Laliji, are you there? All right, okay. So, uh, if you're following us, uh, good, good to have you here. Uh, so, explaining the, the concept of Isha. So, when you use the word Isha, which means the Lord, the Lord is someone who is the commander, who is the ruler, who has that ultimate power. So he is the Lord. So the word of Lord or Lordship symbolizes power and authority. So it is the very source of all the world. It is that which governs the entire world. You have to look at it in a superlative sense. In a relative sense, you say, I am the lord of this factory. It means I'm the boss. I have the, all the power. Now, what is it that commands that power for the whole world? Entire world, he says, I am the supreme commander. So the world is governed by the various laws. Brahman is said to be the supreme law. So supreme law, which controls all the laws in the world. Following Reddy Garu. So this Isha means power. Hiran Mayaha. Hiran Mayaha means I am golden. The word golden indicates something which is bright, which is glittering. So indication of knowledge, the brilliance. So the word Hiranmaya symbolizes brilliance, symbolizes knowledge. And he says, Brahman is the very source of all knowledge. How is the source? Brahman is the knowing principle which enlivens all your knowledge. Harish, are you following? Or oh, a bit lost? No, Guruji, I'm kind of following it. I'm kind of following it. Okay. So the, the word Isha means the Lord, which means power. Am I right? Yes, Guruji. The second we said, Hiranmaya, the word golden means something, something which is right. What did you jot down? You said something when it is bright and Brahman is the source of all knowledge and it is the knowledge uh, principle which enlivens all. Golden means brilliant, something which enlivens, which means knowledge. So Brahman is the knowing principle. Right? Brahman is the knowing principle which enlivens all your knowing. 
it in fact enlivens your knowledge it also enlivens your ignorance it enlivens what you know it also enlivens what you do not know also and the beauty of it is with all your knowledge you can't know it <laughs> you can't know it with all your knowledge yet it enlivens your knowledge it enlivens your ignorance so the golden means knowledge shiva roopam shiva roopam means is the most auspicious the auspiciousness so the word auspicious refers to the goodness or the element of joy or happiness so the three terms he uses isha suggests power hiranmaya refers to knowledge shiva roopam refers to joy or happiness so the three words power knowledge and happiness are these not the three things that we seek in life you want power you want knowledge you want happiness material emotional intellectual but the problem is you're all seeking the ignoramuses are seeking in the world where there isn't whereas he says it is there in brahman brahman is the real power brahman is real knowledge the real source of happiness is within you you are not in the world out there you are seeking it where it isn't it is there right within you therefore he says i am that brahman therefore you got to keep asserting that i am not that neeti reject the lower assert the higher self you get all the power you get all the knowledge you get all the happiness by surely seeking it in the right direction all your pursuit is in vain why we are searching where there isn't any you know you remember the story of that old lady searching in the dark there was a lady who was searching for something and a few passers by who were who saw this helpless old lady with a walking stick struggling to search for something they all started searching sooner they wanted to ask what that lady was searching for she said i lost my needle then they started searching with with the greater attention because it was just a insignificant needle but that meant so much to the lady because that's the only thing she had to stitch her torn clothes they all were searching and a point came they asked this question because they couldn't find where the needle was they asked that lady ma where did you lose your needle i don't seem to find it anywhere she said i lost it in my hut what you lost in your hut yes i lost in my hut then why are you searching here no i don't have any electricity in my hut but there is enough street light here therefore i'm searching here look at the folly and madness of mankind just because the world lures you attracts you tempts you fascinates you and draws you you will go and search for happiness it isn't there isn't any happiness as christ says the kingdom of heaven is within you you are that self there is not thing in the world that can satisfy or give you that power knowledge or bliss or joy there is no satiation in that pursuit remember that you can go out into the world having found the joy within that's all right but don't go out, go out into the world in search of happiness the folly of mankind is you search for power happiness and joy in the world outside you can find it within and roam in the world there's nothing wrong with that it's like you have nothing to buy but you just go out into the world just to experience it no harm in it is it there's nothing you want to just enjoy just go out into the world but you have no desire for it you go with no desire for it you come out unscathed you come out without any 
want or desire or a blemish of desire in you. Nothing. You are just a man of perfection. So these three powerful words are trying to give you that uh, fountainhead of power, bliss and knowledge is right within you. So be ever anchored in your own self. Don't search for it outward. Let not the outward swirl, the swirls of the world swing you. Don't be swirled by the happenings of the world. Be ever rooted within you. So having heard the, the gist of that mantra, let's chant this mantra once. And then I'll take a clarification lastly by Hariji. Hmm? Let's chant this, please. All together. If you all can chant once together, please, it will be lovely. Mahanaham Vishwamaham Vichitram Puratanoham Purushoham Ishaha Kiran Mayoham Shivarupa Masmi. Once more, Anoraniyanaham Evatadvan Mahanaham Vishwamaham Vichitram Puratanoham Purushoham Ishaha Hiran Mayoham Shivarupa Masmi. My salutations to the Guru. What profound wisdom. What profound wisdom. Sad. Nobody understands them. Nobody understands. Okay. Yes, Hariji. Guruji, I have two doubts. See, mm -hmm. uh, from verse 6 to 16, when, uh, when the Guru is uh, talking about Brahman, he is referring that as that, Tat. Mm. And uh, all the thing is coming as Tat, that, that, mm, that. Mm, 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 Whereas from 17 onwards, Till 20th now. I don't know 21st. Mm. 21st he's also. Yeah, he's talking. I am, I am, I am. That mm. is now, that is number one. one let's doubt. take number, let's take that one by one. Okay. As we had told you, I had told you when we were doing the earlier section, mantras 6 to 11 talks about the Brahman, which is the unmanifest and the manifest. Yeah. Mantras 12 to 16, he said, realize that thou art. So when a master says that thou art, that is known as the Upadesha Vakya. It's a statement of advice you receive from a guru. The guru is telling you, you are that truth. Realize it. It's a Upadesha Vakya. Now, mantra 17 to 21, I... I am Brahman. It's an Anubhava Vakya. It's a statement of experience where you are announcing to the world that I am that non-dual Brahman. Having done the Abhyasa, you come to the fourth Maha Vakya where you say, Aham Brahmasmi. I am that Brahman. So the language, the from Tat, that the language is changes to Aham, I, the change in the language, in the grammar, is he's trying to give the conviction of his own personal experience. I am that truth, man. I am that truth. So he's just bringing about that beautiful shift from practice to attainment, to sadhana, to moksha. What is that state of having attained it? That is what is being captured from 17 to 21. So the observation is apt. The justification is acceptable because it is an experience. How would you speak when you are going to a particular place? You say, I'm going there. Having gone there, what do you say? I am here. I am there. I am in it. So the language changes, no? So having reached that goal of realization, he says, that Brahma, Dvayam, Asmayam, I am that non-dual Brahman. Look at that 
profundity of that statement what conviction you must have to say that i am that brahman yeah you know? okay all right second yeah. please see we, we we have been taught that in upanishad they don't repeat the words mm but if you now take many of the words are repeated from mantra 20 onwards say for example mm. if you take uh, the words 16 mm. they say sukshma sukshmataram mm. subtler than the subtlest mm -hmm. now if you are coming back to words 20 there also he is telling anurananiyam that is again subtler than the subtle so uh, a sort of repetition is coming not whereas we have been taught that the rishi never loses his time or words when he is teaching upanishad why is Sir, he trying why yeah. is it that if you remember the very first introductory talk when we started this upanishad yeah i have we have established that this is not a mantra upanishad it's a brahmana upanishad a brahmana upanishad is an explanatory upanishad we saw the inisha vasya is a mantra upanishad okay so the guru has to calibrate his teachings based on the caliber of the student okay. if the student required reiteration he had to explain it but in the isha vasya upanishad the mantra upanishad there is no repetition in 18 mantras he finishes is a master stroke 18 mantras is a, each imagine in cricket each ball that will is hitting six after six after six nobody understands what's going on the ball is disappearing out of the ground it's like that that's a mantra operation no repetition they don't want to waste even one alphabet one yeah. one, one word or yeah. alphabet also they will not waste okay that is that that happens in a mantra operation this is a brahman operation the next Upanishad after this we will take up Man, uh, Mundaka. Mundaka. Mundaka is another Brahman Upanishad. It's explanatory. Okay. You can take it, you can understand that Mundaka Upanishad is like another chapter of the Gita. But it does have an Upanishadic flavor, but it's okay. still explanatory. So you have to understand the knowledge was not that the guru suddenly started talking it is was sought by the student that the guru okay. has to calibrate the knowledge based on the audience and the students okay so the student was of that level he needed perhaps a repetition he repeated it so oh. you got to visualize that okay okay set up that upanishad yeah. the classroom you got to visualize it okay okay sir let's say uh, 100 years from now or 200 years from now somebody falls back on what we have dialogued here gayatri ma make sure this our recording is there for 100 years huh? Huh? and let's say somebody is falling back on what we said and you say oh the guru said that why is he repeating himself because the students were of this caliber now, i'm not saying that the students of any inferior caliber and all huh? No. UK, UK, please don't think that way. You are all of a different league altogether. I can, how can I say that? But if it required to repeat, I would repeat it. Exactly yeah. that's what's happening. Something the Guru spoke at that time necessitated yeah. to repeat because of that scenario demanded so. Yeah. Today, I can't do a hair splitting analysis. Why is he repeating it? But since they would be people who would scrutinize to that extent their answer is brahman upanishad mantra okay, okay okay please from next time give me little more time to prepare don't ask me such difficult questions hari ji for you it is not difficult yes sir you will tell after <laughs> after, after asking you for me that, for I'm me saying, for uh, me it was uh, no, that is no. it's a, it's an app it's an apt observation, but this is the rational explanation that we can give. All right, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Om. 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 Pur namudachate, Pur nasya, Pur namadaya, 
ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಶಿಷ್ಯ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಓಂ